about the documentary um, First to Stand, The Cases and Causes of Erwin Kotler. Wow, so this was really well done all the way around with the production value, camera work, visuals, the different visuals, um, such as the footage, footage that was shown. Um, interviews were really good with all the various people involved in all the different causes. And the music I really liked throughout really set the tone. And then at the end, I really thought the music turned and became more upbeat and hopeful um, as, you know, on the heels of finding out that Rafe was, um, I just hope I'm pronouncing his name right, when that he was released. So that's, that was really cool. I liked the whole setup. I just wish there was a little bit more of an introduction regarding who this Irwin Kotler was. I thought throughout, I really learned about him and his um, fight for human rights and everything. I just wish there was a little bit more of an introduction to him in the beginning, a formal introduction, I guess, but that was probably a choice, um, as he probably didn't, I mean, he's definitely um, a subject matter of this, but I think maybe that kind of took you know, a chair, a second chair to the main cases that were involved here. Um, all these cases were very, I mean, I was very educated on this documentary. I didn't know about a lot of, you know, these cases, most of these cases. Um, it was inspirational. I just think it, this will spark, you know, people to act even in small ways in their communities. I know it did for me. Um, because these people who were involved in these rights, um, the women and the hajibs, and putting their lives online, you know, as far as it's a real, real thing that these women can get arrested and these men can get arrested for thing just for standing up for their own human rights. It's it's appalling, and for them to have it in their heart to do that is quite amazing and inspiring, actually. Um, this was just like I said, amazing, educational, and I really hope it gets out there seen by a lot of people um, in order to spark, you know, the, the small acts that we can do in our everyday lives. Um, I, I, there's some quotes that I want to mention that stood out to me. One is, every one of us can make a difference. Um, another one is, are all humans human? Um, just some really powerful things in this. The fact that these countries came together to make a stand um, for the freedom of choice and, and against these political imprisonments and, and executions. I mean, it's amazing that in 2022, this is a thing to be awed by. I mean, it should have just been something that our countries had come together on previously um, so it's amazing how long it took, but I'm just glad we're getting, the, getting to that point now. Anyway, I really like this a lot. Great job to the filmmakers. Again, I just hope this really gets out there to a really big audience. Um, this really should be something on Amazon, Netflix, all the different applications and platforms. So great job to everybody. Hi, these are my comments on First Stand. I really enjoyed this documentary. I thought it was thoughtful, um, informative. I think they did a great job of towing a line between um, informing but also inspiring. Um, I think uh, I love the, the structure, uh, grounding the story and the freedom of the political prisoner, Raif, and um, speaking in talks with his wife. Uh, was really great as a like a narrative through line um, and you could really feel the tension of that throughout and then I think the storytellers did a really great job of weaving that with stories of political prisoners old and new some familiar some not um, I think that they also did a great job of grounding it in the present like Putin and uh, the ways in which uh, Russia has infringed upon the freedom of its citizens and also just like citizens around the globe uh, is very like relevant at this moment. And so um, regardless of when it was made, it's um, really sobering to watch this documentary um, with the knowledge that we have now about the Ukraine. And I think that they did a really great job of bringing in um, that story 
um, and juxtaposing it with all these different stories of political prisoners and what it is um, to really participate in democracy um, in a really thoughtful and meaningful way. And I think that mixing the old and the new and the well-known and the not well-known does really great job of like uh, bolstering and furthering the themes of activism uh, and uh, not just informing you about the actual foundation itself, but um, what the foundation, uh, what its foundations are. Um, and so I think they, the documentary has picked a really great subject and they did an excellent job of executing uh, the mission of this foundation uh, and humanitarian rights in a way that isn't uh, preachy, but does make you, uh, that it's like thought provoking. Uh, and picked really great people to interview that are passionate and the one about uh, the woman who was uh, protesting the hijab and and then was eventually like um, attacked by Iranian agents uh, was it was really powerful and and and, and very like interesting to watch uh, and it makes you want to dive deeper into the topic, which I think obviously is was was a big part of what the the documentary set out to do. So, uh, well done all around. It's so good to see that there are still some people standing up for human rights. There are times you look at the news and things going on, and you wonder who's fighting for these people, or if there's even a purpose fighting for them in our free countries, because will their governments listen? This documentary taught me that through the protesters in our country, through those working for human rights, we can get our governments to pass laws to sanction these countries if they violate it, which is essentially forcing uh, other countries to do what we say in the name of human rights. There's definitely still a lot of work to do, and it's great that there's these good men that are doing it, and I appreciate learning their stories and that they always will fight the good fight that some people just don't have it in their heart to do. That these men are willing to risk their own potential imprisonment and their own lives to stand up for what's right. And it's great still seeing that there are human beings still alive like that that are willing to sacrifice for people that they've never even met before just to make sure they have some, the same rights that everybody else does. First to Stand, this is a really great documentary and it covered a lot of different issues, human rights issues, um, political corruption uh, in different places around the world and also uh, that happened at different times and are still happening. Um, the they just must be so overwhelmed <laughs> and and they kind of show that too near the beginning of the film where they say you know we have this issue this issue this issue this issue how do we choose where to focus our efforts right um what i thought was interesting was just the perspective of this documentary and the subjects um having having the ear of people who can make a difference. We see meetings with like prime ministers and policymakers, and um, this is a team who really can help make a difference and help laws and bills be passed. Um, and so it's kind of nice to get that like inside look of the work, you know, one aspect of the work that is being done and seeing how the different countries um, have gathered together um, in the name of human rights. And, you know, it was, it was a heavy film. It was a heavy film, but it did have, it did have wins throughout. It did have um, moments of, of positivity. And I do really like that it ended with um, Rafe, right? Rafe, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, being freed from incarceration. Uh, so I'm, I'm so glad because that was kind of a, it's kind of the main storyline, I would say, that was continuous throughout. Um, and it's been a long, years long process of trying to uh, get, get him out. And uh, so it was just nice that amidst all of the heaviness and 
darkness of all of this that uh, every once in a while you do get a win. So I, I thought this was very educational. It's kind of, it might be even something to watch a second time just because there is so much information and like I'm sure that things were um, missed on, on my end. But um, yeah, it's kind of one of those pieces that you have to like sit with and, and absorb it because it's a lot and, and these are real things that are happening in our real world and um, you know we're just lucky that there are people who have dedicated their lives to righting these wrongs and advocating for people um, and so seeing something like this especially yeah just seeing the good guys um, is really inspiring and motivating and is like a little a little light in the darkness of the world so uh, I'm very glad this piece exists. I think it's a very important piece uh, that people need to hear and uh, see. So I really hope that this uh, gets out to as many people as possible. And uh, yeah, wonderful work on a wonderful film. This review is for first two stands. And they focus on Irving Kotler, which is a human rights advocate and activist um, they show a lot of intense footage for rioting people being abused and oppressed mostly by the police and this footage unfortunately comes from all over the world and from different decades uh, some of them very recently also unfortunately um, they touch on justice and injustice those two concepts that somehow some places in the world don't quite get and how indifference plays out in this equation. They also focus on the Raoul Wallenberg Center and how a lot of activists and create um, petitions to advocate for government officials to stand up to, for example, Putin and other dictators. And I like to watch how they talk about the exemplary role Canada has played on the global reaction to genocide and human rights violation. Putting this example that above all, we should always side with the victims and the oppressed and never for any reason justify any genocides anywhere. Um, it was interesting as well to learn about the Magnitsky precedent, which from my opinion, in my opinion, is quite important as a diplomatic way to fight corruption and uh, um, totalitarian oppressors. Um, I don't know. Um, they, they talked about Rwanda, Iran, Navalny in Russia. It's just so much to take on and it's so much going on. This film make, makes a, a great job at um, encompassing what's being done and what impacts are they having. And it was just nice to see some of the nicer stories that were also showcased and people that are constantly putting their lives at risk to make things better for everyone else. Um, I love the impactful sh closing remarks about siding up with the oppressor through indifference. And this just should be taught in every single primary school. Um, indifference um, sometimes is just worse than being the aggressor. Uh, I think that's what they meant with that, but um, it was just very informative, quite emotional, and so sad to watch. It's just tragic that this keeps happening everywhere. Again, the hope that these people in, infuse through their actions is quite inspirational, and I had a great time watching this. This film is called First to Stand. This was a fantastic doc feature. We are privileged to hear about courageous people fighting oppression. It was great to learn in moving interviews about the work of Canadian Erwin Kotler. What a dynamic, brave man who has spent so many years fighting for the rights and freedoms of political prisoners. Lots of historical footage of major civil rights leaders like Nelson Mandela. 
The film suggests that countries have had success to fight against injustice by international pressure. I was also inspired by seeing all the marches and protests for various causes over the years. I feel that this doc feature has an optimistic viewpoint. Justice will be served by all the hard work and responsibility of us all. Well done, film. This is a massive attack on human rights. Everyone has the capability to make a difference. Uh, I love the imagery of the variety of different revolutions that are taking a stand over the years. Uh, with all of these crises uh, afoot, where do you stand on how much energy are you willing to provide for a cause? How do you choose what to take on? Uh, free Rafe, freedom of speech. He's been sentenced to 10 years and a thousand lashes. The fact that you get glimpses of his lashing footage, uh, despite it being forbidden, these true acts of courage for the sake of freedom. Uh, the power of media has prevented more of his lashings from occurring. And so the uniting of human rights movements, talking to international journalists, uh, these things are uh, crimes in other countries, but these are essential for change to come about. You see how high this goes when you see these gentlemen sit down with people such as Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada. Uh, you hear Anatoly for it, uh, later to be revealed that he was in solitary confinement uh, for participating in human rights movements over the years. Uh, you find <clears throat> a peace within oneself, he states, getting by uh, by playing chess with himself inside his head, the tipping point for releasing these political prisoners uh, those imprisoning them have to find it in their best interest to release them. You see the generations of the human rights movements uh, up to how it's re relevant to even today when you see Trump and Putin uh, side by side one another. Uh, Bill Bauer is uh, one of Putin's uh, least liked list. And after the death of one of his comrades, he makes it a mission to gain justice for his friend. Uh, the McGinsky Act, McGinsky Act has taken place and has been building uh, a platform for years to follow, uh, cutting ties to those who have uh, decided to create these punishable acts. Uh, Me Too, Iran, uh, so we've been learning about these uh, two individuals and their journeys on their path of human rights movements uh, they've had separately, and now we've seen them uh, eventually come together, and they have inspired these acts to build from the US to Canada to the UK, uh, throughout Europe, Australia, Japan, Latvia. You can see the puzzle pieces, all uh, the hands in the pie, uh, so to speak, for these causes that ultimately uh, connect down to the core of freedom of press and freedom of speech. Uh, these incidents put a spotlight uh, on the countries. We hear uh, the outcries from uh, what we've learned is that it truly does take one person to make a difference. And freedom of choice is a critical issue uh, in today's climate. And um, every woman must launch their own revolution. There is a war on women, and it's as if this documentary doesn't hit home for the means of justices throughout history. They dive into this journey of being part of the movement with uh, none other than Nelson Mandela, and it seems <clears throat> to me that each act uh, connects and reflects uh, from one another uh, throughout history and we use these lessons as a means uh, towards creating a better path for these basic human rights freedoms. Uh, it's hard to get in the head of serial killers because we don't share the same values. So it's hard for us sometimes to connect with these people who we see as villains because we, uh, you know, we don't understand what it's like to be in that mindset to begin with. And uh, the, you have to not be afraid to take risks. You cannot be silenced. Uh, it's always gonna be something that happens within you. And if these prisoners are going the extra mile, 
we can stand by them and we can stand up for social justices. Uh, we all have a platform. We all just have to know how to utilize it and not be afraid to use it. Uh, we have a lot of things happening right now and RAFE was just released this year. This year. This is happening right now. Iran is happening right now. So it just goes to show that the work is never done.